Good morning, everyone. My name is Marissa Chow, and I am delighted to participate in this conference. My contribution is to provide an insight into fibulae of the ancient Near East, their function, exact chronology and context, and their transmission first from the Aegean world and then to Assyria via the Southern Levant. The mechanism of adoption by the elite of both the Southern Levant and Assyria was facilitated by local and imperial trade routes throughout the region. The fibula was adopted and then changed to suit the needs and preferences of the local elite. These inclinations are reflected at certain sites within the Southern Levant, the relationships between which I have explored. The precursor to the fibula, the toggle pin, first appears as early as the Chalcolithic period and was introduced to the Southern Levant by the end of the early Bronze Age from Anatolia. This type of pin was worn throughout the Bronze Age before disappearing entirely by the Iron Age to be replaced with the fibula. Part of this change from the toggle pin to the fibula was likely a result of a change in fashion brought on by an advancement in weaving technology in the wider Mediterranean basin. This change to a looser, more draped style of clothing thus constituted the need for more advanced fasteners such as the fibula. Part of the rise of the change in fashion is attributed to the exchange of goods and ideas that spread along the vast network of routes that facilitated trade throughout the ancient Mediterranean. There are several examples across the Mediterranean that show that fibulae were commonly worn adornments. The earliest examples of a fibula represented on sculpture come from reliefs in Assyria and Anatolia at Khorsabad and Ephes, depicting men bringing tribute to various rulers, as that's what's being seen in the leftmost picture. Concurrent with these depictions are examples from Marash and Zinkirli, also depicting both men and women wearing the fibula to fasten a garment during ordinary life. These artistic depictions continue into the Persian period and beyond. The earliest fibulae appear in Italy and were imported to the Aegean during the late Helladic 3B, that is the 13th century BCE, and to Cyprus, as indicated by a fibula from late Cypriot 2C and Comi. <coughs> Excuse me. In the 12th century BCE, one piece fibulae appear at Hala Sultan Teke on Cyprus with a close parallel from northern Italy. By the turn of the millennium, fibulae appear at various sites in Greece, such as Salamis and Parati, as well as on Cyprus. At this early time, fibulae of this style also begin to appear at Levantine sites, such as the Phase F Citadel at Hama, and three Group A copper alloy fibulae are found at Tel Teinat in contemporaneous contexts. As far as groupings, I used Friedhelm Pede's 2000 dissertation-based monograph for the types. Current information suggests that fibulae in Aegean forms appeared in the Southern Levant during the early Iron IIA at the harbor of Tel Abu Huam. This would be the 10th century. A single specimen from stratum IV stands as the earliest of its kind in stratified context in the Southern Levant and thus joins other indications of active participation of the inhabitants of Tel Abu Huam in the Eastern Mediterranean trade networks that might have brought the fibula to the site. Another fibula was found at stratum three at Tel Abu Hawam, dated to the late Iron IIA, and additional contexts dating to this period feature fibulae for the first time. Single items were found at Tel Hatsor, stratum 8b, Tel Michal, stratum 13, and Lahish level four, while three items were found at Tel Bet Shemesh in tomb one. These Aegean style items from Tel Abu Hawam and Tel Lahish, alongside items belonging to groups B and C, thus indicate the development of local variants. By the Iron IIb, that is the 8th century, fibulae in the Southern Levant begin to change forms, becoming distinctly local in style and not Cypriot or Aegean in design. Fibulae become more common in Judah at sites housing administrative personnel, such as Tel Lahish level three and Tel Beersheba strata two and three. It is also during this time that the one piece fibula ceases to exist or be produced in the Southern Levant at all, instead favoring the two pieced version. The one piece fibula exists only in Cyprus and Greece from this point forward in the geometric period. It is also during the Iron IIb that fibulae spread further into the Caucasus Anatolia regions and into Assyria. The 
latter was probably as a result of the incorporation of Aramayan culture and dress into Assyrian practices as a result of the gradual Aramaization of Assyria. Examples of this phenomenon are two fibulae discovered in sarcophagi in tomb two at Nimrud. In the Iron II C, the seventh century, with the spread of Assyrian influence, the now changed fibula spreads throughout the empire, the Southern Levant included. With regard to local fibulae development, the number and groups of fibulae at Megiddo increases into the double digits, as well as smaller increases in the Transjordan, mainly at Amman. In addition, Assyrian style fibulae are added to the distribution for the first time. This would be group D. The spread of Assyrian style fibulae is concurrent with the growing dominance of Assyria over the region, as well as the spread of Assyrian production techniques and fibula manufacture. In this period, it is developed into a distinctive and long lasting Assyrian form, as fibulae are seen worn by Persians century after their inception in an almost identical way to the Assyrians, like on the Apadana at Persepolis. Several examples of the remodeled Assyrian style of fibulae have been found at sites within the Southern Levant. This is a result of this kind of fibula being both imported from Assyria and manufactured locally within the Southern Levant. Fibulae tend to be fairly evenly distributed throughout the Southern Levant, with examples as far north as Hatsor and as far south as Horvat Rigma, with one southernmost exception located at Tel El Khalifa. To further contextualize the distribution of fibulae in each period, I have chosen certain sites to be examined against the larger historical archaeological background of the Southern Levant in the Iron II. Analyzing the numbers and context of fibulae in these specific cases allows us to determine the function of the fibula at the site in which it was found. The following focuses on Tel Bet Shemesh, Tel Be'er Sheva, and Megiddo. Beginning with Bet Shemesh, three fibulae were found in tomb one. Taking into account that Bet Shemesh was a regional administrative center in the Iron 2A, and those fibulae were discovered in tomb one with a rich assemblage, it is suggested that fibulae were worn by the administrative class of urban centers. A chemish is an example of the form and function of the fibula being adopted by the local administrative class, which differs from how they're found in subsequent periods. The second example of well-contextualized fibulae is at Tel Ber Sheva. Of the 12 fibulae discovered there, three are from stratum three, and nine are from stratum two, both strata dating to the iron 2B. Distributed all over the town, these fibulae are found in everything from domestic context to storerooms to the central quarter, suggesting that they were common items here. A possible reason for the appearance of so many well-contextualized fibulae in a relatively small site could be the nature of Tel Beersheba itself as a Judahite administrative center and a commercial hub involved in the desert trade route during the 8th century BCE. Located at a major road junction, this site sits at the confluence of trade routes between the desert fringe, the Mediterranean, and the Judahite heartland, enabling it to be a meeting point for different passengers who could exchange ideas and practices with the locals and other travelers. It is against this background that the appearance in the 8th century of fibulae at the site and both strata three and two should be understood, both as the belongings of Judahite officials residing in the trade center and possibly of some of the merchants that pass through the site on trade routes. The main assemblage of fibulae during the Iron II Sea comes from Tel Megiddo. Out of the 56 fibulae found throughout the site, 21 come from clean contexts. 14 of the 56 total fibulae come from stratum three and are very well contextualized. Only three come from good context and were discovered in stratum two, either suggesting that the object was more popular during the time when the city was under Assyrian authority or that this paucity of fibulae in stratum two is due to other post-depositional processes of which we are unaware. Most of the fibulae found in Megiddo in both strata two and three are of common groups to the Southern Levant regardless of whether or not they come from good context, but there are outliers in stratum three. One is of special note. 
as it belongs to subgroup D5 that finds parallels in Assyria, but it includes a stamped seal stone as part of the fibula itself. The image here on your screens is of an ibex, although the drawing is not terribly great, and I do apologize for that. As seals are shown to have been worn on one's person in Assyria and other regions in the ancient Near East, it is logical that such a stamp seal be discovered at Megiddo, the site of Assyrian governance within the Southern Levant. What is unique about this seal, however, is that it is attached to the fibula itself. In addition, the incorporation of a stamp seal on an Assyrian style fibula is further evidence of the Aramaic influence on the Assyrian empire as Levantine stamp seals began to replace Assyrian cylinder seals in this period. The nature of Megiddo as an Assyrian provincial capital likely influenced both the variety and the quantity of finds, fibulae included, especially in stratum three. Given the nature of the Assyrian deportation and resettlement policy, Piersman suggests that Sargon II rebuilt Megiddo to Assyrian architectural standards to further control the roads leading to Egypt and facilitate trade and bolster the Assyrian Empire's economic prosperity. It was then settled by deportees from Babylonia and other parts of the empire. In order to administer the upkeep of such a large socio-political entity, it would be necessary for the Assyrians to establish a series of settlements along important political and commercial routes, both to administer the complexities of the imperial system and strengthen the state economy. Architectural remains of stratum three of Megiddo suggest that its construction took place under a strong economic and political force. Such a force would have been needed to mobilize the manpower and other resources required for such an endeavor. To sum up, as part of an ideology of elitism in the Southern Levant, in both local and imperial contexts, a new fashion was adopted as a mark of status. Part of this new fashion included the new use of fibulae beginning in the early Iron Age, and then intensifying to the point where fibulae were common as a part of the elite costume by the Iron II period. The arrival of new goods to Southern Levantine sites is due to the widespread trade network through the Near East, Levant, and Aegean regions. In this case, the desire for luxury goods such as fibulae and other jewelry demonstrates that the wider society reflected a taste for materially complex ornaments. The desire to acquire something fashionable in the wider world urged the elite of the Southern Levant to adopt the fibula as part of their elite dress code. In addition, the wide extent of trade routes, especially passing through Tel Beersheba, would have enabled the elite to be both cognizant of and have access to such luxury goods in an early period. Later, as the Assyrian domination over the Southern Levant, excuse me, Southern Levant progressed, these changes in elite representation spread northward, bringing the fibula to the imperial elite of Megiddo in the late Iron II C. The spread of fibulae to and from the Southern Levant and their integration into the local and imperial spheres created a long-standing tradition that is seen centuries later in Persia and the rest of the world, even having its own iteration in the modern safety pin, which is still used today. Now, I understand that there will be an opportunity for questions and comments um, after the section break, and I look forward to such discussions. Thank you.